How is everyone today? Hello, thank you so much. Welcome to Adobe at IBC 2019. My name is Jason Levine, and as always, it's such a pleasure to be here at the coveted opening slot on opening day, after the show has just opened. And seeing all the heads in the audience here, this is why I always love this slot. This is my favorite time, favorite time of day. Thank you, Adobe employees, for sitting down. We're very honest here. Thank you. Oh, yes, they're making a lot of noise. In any case, it is my pleasure today to talk to you about getting to the finish line faster with mixing audio using the Essential Sound Panel in Premiere Pro. And if you're not an audio engineer, if you're not an audio expert, what really makes this feature not only incredibly useful and incredibly efficient is that we're going to do a lot of the work for you. We're going to leverage a little bit of Adobe Sensei here and there to handle things like compression for voices, um, optimizing and auto-matching levels of all of your audio content, whether it's dialogue, music, sound effects, or ambience, to meet broadcast standards for export. All of this can happen inside of the Essential Sound Panel, and all of this comes with the very simple implementation of tagging your media, telling Essential Sound, what is this? and then basically giving you all the effects and filters that you would otherwise need to process that content very quickly and with beautiful sound. And as an audio engineer myself, I'm the first person who would tell you, you know, mm, not quite there, not so. Mm, I don't know, maybe you'd want to do this in audition. You can absolutely use this for any kind of production, whether it's broadcast, whether it's Netflix, HBO, anything like that. This is something which can be part of your workflow, whether you're an audio person or not, or just an editor. So we're going to start here with a project from a film called See You Around, directed by Oren Brimmer. And uh, we're looking at basically the raw mix, the levels only mix um, of this particular bar scene. So we have a mixture of dialogue, we've got some ambient sound, we've got some music unmixed, and we just threw everything into the timeline here. And if we just take a quick listen, here's kind of what that raw, unmixed version sounds like at present. <laughs> Paul in the back, we might need a little more output. Thank you. All right. So you can hear barely the dialogue. You can basically hear a lot of sound design. And then there's some music as well. So where do we start? OK, so this is the brilliance of essential sound. Now, right now, everything is grayed out. But if you look up in the corner here, you're going to see that there are four types. And basically, you're going to tag your media either as dialogue, music, sound effects or ambience. And once you do that, it's going to reveal to you a series of effects and filters that you would use to commonly process those file types. So let's go ahead and select all of our dialogue here. It's all of the green media. And I'm going to click on Dialogue. All right. Now, as mentioned, it now offers up all of the common things that an audio engineer would use to process dialogue. Now, the first thing. And the first place that I typically start, and this is really key to essential sound, is loudness auto-matching. Now, something that probably anyone can identify, whether you work in broadcast or if you do videos for social or, or marketing, is when you record different people speaking, everybody has a different average level of how they talk. If you're a professional speaker, you are probably very consistent. If you're not, you're probably wildly inconsistent. And when you have different types of speakers on different types of microphones, whether it's a boom, whether it's a lav, whether it's a, a direct ADR in a studio, all of those levels are going to be very different. So this is at a time loss to you as an editor because you need to spend a lot of time just bringing everything to kind of the same rough level just to get started. Loudness auto-matching will do that for you in a single click. So when I click on loudness auto-match, and you see I still have all of those dialogue clips selected, it's going to take all of that dialogue and automatically match it to a target loudness of minus 23 LUFS. That, of course, stands for loudness units relative to full scale based on the broadcast standard. So it's taken all of your dialogue, regardless of who's speaking on those clips, and making them all the same apparent loudness level. All right? This is key. This is awesome. We're going to do this now for all of the other media in here as well. So let's go ahead and tag our ambience. It's all those clips in orange. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to match those. And then we're going to do it for music. Now, music in particular 
This is key because anyone who's used any kind of background music underscore to production, you know, especially today, that if we're talking, you know, if we have EDM <laughs> mixed with classical or jazz or classic rock, again, your loudness levels, the actual measurement of loudness is going to be very, very different. So you spend a lot of time manually keyframing and re reorging things to, to just balance them out. This is going to do it for you automatically. Loudness auto matching. So now, just having done that across these clips, let's just wind this back a bit. Hi, yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to... Okay, so already we're starting uh, to hear okay. Great. I'd more like than we heard before. Oh, um, actually, we don't have that. I'm gonna um, drop I've been here before and I've definitely had it here. The so level of some of the ambience here. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five. And again, with all of our ambience selected, you'll see that we have a clip volume control in Essential Sound so that it'll dynamically adjust the level of all of that ambient sound all at the same time. If I wanted to, I can do it on individual clips as well. But this allows me very quickly to kind of fine tune the relative levels of everything very, very quickly. All right? So we tag first, we're presented with effects and filters that are common to those types and then we can begin processing, all right? So let's keep working a little bit on the dialogue here. Let's go back to these. So again, we can select everything. If you have nothing selected, once you've tagged everything, this is going to show you the different types of clips that you've already tagged. So I can simply click on dialogue and it's automatically going to select all of those for me. Now I just wanna run through a couple of the amazing things that we have in here, all right? Now, whether or not you need this, at some point, if you've worked on audio, You'll probably have a need to perhaps remove some type of noise, perhaps remove some low frequency rumble, maybe remove or attenuate some hum, de -essing. I just worked with someone, a podcaster, and they were recording with a Blue Yeti, which is a fine microphone. But much like in Harry Potter, where the wand chooses the wizard, the microphone also chooses the voiceover artist, and for some voices, it can be very sibilant. They were unaware of how to remove that harsh and I said, well, if you go into essential sound, you'll see the DS slider, and it takes care of that for you. So you can DS, remove sibilance, you can reduce ambient reverb. This was a feature that we actually introduced last year, our new D-reverb filter. If you have a lot of ambience or echo in your recordings, you record stuff in a boardroom or in an echoey reflective environment, reduce reverb can actually attenuate and minimize the echo and reflections with a single slider, okay? So you have all of these repair functions available to you. Beyond that, you have this little section here called Clarity. And this is something that we're going to focus on now. So Clarity is effectively allowing you to add dynamics compression or limiting to your voiceovers. Now again, as, an, as a video editor, if you're not familiar with setting audio compression, this is the easiest thing to one, overdo, and to do incorrectly. If you've ever given an audio compressor to someone unfamiliar with setting compression, the likelihood of them doing it properly, save for using a preset, and even with using a preset, is probably pretty slim. It's kind of like color correction. It's an art. You need to know how to do it, and you need to know how to do it right. This is where we're going to implement a little bit of Adobe Sensei magic, because one of the things, one of the elements of compression is a setting called threshold. Threshold is the point at which compression begins. And your audio must exceed that threshold in order for you to begin either squashing down or lifting up that audio. This clarity slider is going to do all of that with a single, single slider here. And it's going to use Adobe Sensei, our AI machine, machine learning technology, to automatically detect those threshold levels to apply the correct compression. What this does is it's going to set those levels properly so that it's never too loud, it doesn't over amplify, and it just brings that sound into a more focused domain. And you'll actually see, if you look below the slider here, you can control a more natural sound versus a more focused and present sound. So I've got everything selected here. Let's go ahead and play this back. I'm gonna turn on dynamics, and I'm gradually going to start increasing this slider and you'll see how it starts to just bring up all the overall levels of the dialogue. Five years, so let me just check on that for you. Thank you. Okay, now we haven't added any noise cleanup yet, so don't worry about that for now. 
Okay. Yeah, no, we don't have it. Okay, I'll take a shot of fireball. Perfect. Okay, let's wind back again. And let's go ahead and disable that and play this back. Yeah, no, we don't have it. Okay, I'll take a shot of fireball. All over after us. Okay. Take a shot of fireball. All over after us. Get like. Okay, I'll take a shot of fireball. All over after us. Get. I'll take a shot of fireball. All over after us. Get. Take a shot of fireball. All over after us. So we can dra uh, gradually come in here and find the appropriate Thank levels you. that we need. Cheers. To adjust the amount of dynamics. Now here's the incredible thing about this. If you want manual control over this compression, if you go into your effects controls and select an individual clip, what you'll see is that this is actually applying our dynamics processing effect, which is a combined compressor limiter expander, to each of those clips. So you still have total manual control for setting the dynamics, for setting the compression level on each of those clips, including all of your manual settings for attack and release, input and output gain, all of it, including a whole series of presets that we've already created for you. But you never have to go there, and that's the key with Essential Sound, is that we've broken everything down into a single slider so that all of that other stuff just lingers in the background. You don't have to worry about knowing all the details of working with it. It's just going to do it for you. Now let's kind of skip ahead here and go back to our ambient noise for a moment, okay? Let's turn off the dialogue for a second and let's solo these. So in ambience, you have loudness auto matching, which we've already done. You have a creative section here, which allows you to add some ambient reverb or sort of room replacement. Again, a lot of times if you get sound effects and sound design from different libraries, if you're trying to match a particular environment, it might be too dry or it may be too wide or too narrow. So you can use a little ambient reverb to kind of place it more in the environment that you're seeing on screen. We then have a stereo width control. So in the case of this ambient sound, let's take a listen here. I'll pump the levels back up again. Okay. Maybe we want this to be a little wider. And by widening the stereo of the ambience, that's going to effectively carve out more space for the dialogue to sit right in the middle. So I'm going to turn on some stereo width. Now, you're not going to hear this on the stream, of course. But here in the theater, as I begin pushing this wider and wider, you should hear that this is now expanding into a much wider stereo field versus narrowing the width. Okay, almost making it sound a bit mono. Right. Nice and wide, drop it down. Let's unsolo these. Establishment, and I know you do, so. Would you mind double checking? Oh, well, because you blinked your eyes so tight, really ass, I will double check for you. Ah, oh, thanks. Okay. So really, in a couple of seconds now, whereas before we couldn't hear any dialogue, we were inundated with all of this ambient sound, you couldn't really hear the music, now the dialogue is peeking through. We have this nice, wide ambient sound, and we have some real great flexibility with how we control of this with just single slider controls using Essential Sound. Even if this gets you 80% of the way, this is going to save you such an enormous amount of time because you don't have to think about all the different various effects and things that you would typically need to process, it's all here, all right? Now having said that, you see something here ducking. We're gonna come back to this for ambient sound, but I wanna focus on using auto ducking in another project here, dialogue and music. This is one of the greatest innovations that we've added to the Essential Sound Panel because this is, again, one of those audio engineer-specific processes, right? Side-chain ducking. Anybody who's an audio engineer knows side-chain ducking. You can do this manually in Audition. If you don't know how to do that, how would you normally duck or attenuate music underneath dialogue? Well, you would probably draw keyframes, right, with volume envelopes, which you can still do. So we could come in here and we could come over to our music track. Here's our dialogue. So let's play this back for a second. Start quicker. Right, so we really can't hear the dialogue right now. Visualize the outcome. And I might come in here and I might start, you know, drawing keyframes like this and just ducking the music a few dB wherever there's talking. Oh, sorry, I grabbed the wrong keyframe there. You know, something like this. This is probably how many of you have done this in the past. Well, that's fine, but again, it's at a time loss to you. 
and we're trying to help you get to the finish line faster. So auto-ducking, using Adobe Sensei, automatically detects the thresholds and the overall levels of your dialogue, and then will automatically keyframe and attenuate the music underneath that dialogue, or actually any tagged or untagged source. So let me show you how this works. So we've got our music selected. It's already been tagged as music. And here we have ducking. Let's go ahead and enable this. Now, what's awesome about this feature is that there are three very basic controls here. Sensitivity, all right? How quickly it's going to react. That's basically your threshold control, right? And then you have your duck amount. How much do you want to attenuate the music underneath the dialogue? Now, the default here is 18 dB. That's probably a little too much. Let's start around minus 10. And then fade. Fade is, once it ducks that music, how quickly should it, how quickly should it ramp into the duck, the attenuation? And then when it's finished ducking, how quickly does it ramp back into regular volume? So, eight-tenths of a second here, that's probably a little long for this. Maybe we'll make this around 400 for a start, okay? And then you have this section here, duck against. Now, the default is to duck against dialogue. This is the most common. But you can use this, you can duck against other music, other sound design in your project, or you can duck against sound effects, or you can duck against ambience, or you can duck against clips that aren't tagged at all. So if you're bringing in projects from another NLE or DAW, you can still use this feature without having to do this manually. Now in Premiere, you're going to click on Generate Keyframes. And when you do that, if you just notice down below, can you see what it did? It has automatically now drawn all the keyframes for me, identifying and automatically attenuating that music to allow the dialogue to push through. Time savings? Yes, Adobe employee, thank you. He's very excited. This is, this is exciting. So let's take a listen. Let's hear what this sounds like now. Start quicker. Visualize the outcome. Okay. Now, it's pretty good. The dialogue maybe needs a little help here. It's a bit quiet, right? The ducking is good, but we need more dialogue. So once again, here's where I'm going to turn on some dynamics, a little compression, and we'll use about 50% here. Let's wind this back, and now let's take a listen. Start quicker. Visualize the outcome. Let's go back to our music here. Economize your movements. And maybe 10 dB is just a bit much, so let's back it off. Let's do about seven and a half. We'll regenerate our keyframes. Okay, and if you take note down below, you'll see that it has readjusted slightly. Keep growing. Accelerate through the turns. All right. Now, just to showcase to you, take a look here, and this is showing you, this is effectively, in time, how much a 400 millisecond fade looks like, or is represented. If we change that back to the default, 800, all right? Let's regenerate those keyframes. You can now see that that duration has doubled. So it's now a longer, a little more dramatic fade down and fade back up. Work together. Get to the finish line faster. Okay. Auto ducking is wickedly awesome. Powered by Adobe Sensei, still with manual control, ducking against anything, ducking against projects brought in from other applications, not only Adobe ones. I mean, we have so many great bits of Adobe magic, and this is not reinventing the wheel. It's just making it faster, literally faster, cutting off enormous amounts of time. Now, the really cool thing about this is, of course, that this works the same way in Audition as well. And as mentioned, let's say you had a section where we wanted that music to be even more dramatic. 
you still have full manual editability of these keyframes. So after it auto detects all of your levels, you can still make modifications to the keyframes in the timeline. Okay? So this is just, this comes at an incredible time savings to you and truly allows you to finish. And again, maybe it's not the final version, but it's going to get you most of the way there that much faster. So back to our original project here. So let's talk about some of the things again that we discussed. First, Essential Sound quickly allows you to tag your media. Tell Essential Sound what you're working with, and it's going to give you all the tools you need to finesse that audio. We started with dialogue. We talked about loudness auto-matching. Sorry, my mouse is freaking out here, right? Loudness auto-matching, allowing you to take dialogue from multiple speakers and make them all the same apparent loudness in a single click. Truly, my, my favorite feature in this panel because that's something which I would have batch processed manually before. It does all the work for me, all right? And then we have all of the repair available to us. Noise reduction, rumble reduction, hum reduction. Um, right. I've been here before. Reverb reduction, clarity, dynamics, equalization. Again, adding some EQ here. Lots of different presets to get you started, but again, a single slider takes care of that for you. You then also have reverb and ambience that you can add back here as well. This is essentially important if you're working with dialogue that came from ADR, right? It was replaced dialogue done in a studio, done on studio microphones. That is not going to sound like the boom mic recordings captured live on set. So not only are you going to have to equalize it, which you can do right here, but you're then going to have to add back in a little of that ambience, right? They're in a, in a bar, so it has to be a bit more reflective. So we could come into something like this. Let's just see where we are here. Let me solo these, see if I can find a good, a good clip. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know if you heard, but we don't have that. All right. Well, I'm going to turn some of this stuff off because I'm having trouble hearing it in here. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know if you heard, okay. but... We don't have so that. here we're in a large well, reflective room. A um, to Let's go yeah, into a so small dry room. Double checking. Oh well, because you blinked your eyes so tight, okay. you really asked. Back I will off. double check for you. Ah, oh, thanks. Shipment just came in. No. Okay, and then we can find the appropriate amount of room ambience that kind of suits the production. All right, really simple, really effective, and then of course we have a basic clip volume control. For ambience, we talked about loudness auto-matching, again, creative reverb, stereo widening, and ducking. This was something that was added in April of this year, ambience auto-ducking. So now, <clears throat> again, if you're doing sound design, you have a separate way that you can duck the ambient sound design against dialogue or other elements in your production. And then when it comes to music, again, similarly, we have loudness auto-matching. We have the ability to adjust duration of your musical clips inside of the Essential Sound panel using our stretching algorithm, and then auto-ducking as well. These are just some of the incredible things that you have available to you in Essential Sound. All the while, remember, of course, having the ability to manually modify. Again, here's our amplify effect on that music clip where we can adjust independent channels if we so desire. Really simple, really easy. Again, if we were to talk to uh, stereo expansion, again, here's the manual control for stereo expansion, adjusting the center channel so that we don't end up with a ghost center or the hard limiter, okay, to adjust these things. These are all of those effects that are added in the background, but you never have to go there. Essential Sound is going to handle all of that for you. And if you implement some of our track project, uh, project templates, which I'll be talking about later today, you can also have something like our loudness radar meter on your master channel, which can be pre-configured in a project template so that when you're playing back your content, you you're going to know checking? if it conforms oh, well, to your particular your so broadcast really standard, asked, where, which as I'm looking at this right now, Eric, next. we did it. We are broadcast compliant. I wasn't even yeah. trying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want and I am below minus 23 lufts. Super cool. All right. So Thank you. All right, my friends, that is all the time I have. We've got lots of show for you today. So stick around if you've got questions about Premiere, about Audition, or the seven ways in which we can get you to the, to the timeline, to the finish line faster. 
Please ask my colleagues on the other side of the booth. Have a great IBC Day One, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.